Hi friends. Let's start this session with something fun. You all must have seen fireworks. We all love them. All the colors and patterns in the sky. The view is mesmerizing. However, did you notice one thing here? You see fireworks before and you hear the sound of bursting of crackers later. Why does this happen? Let's see another example. When you see an explosion, the same thing happens. You see the explosion first and then you hear the loud sound. Another example of this is when a bolt of lightning is struck. Well, why does all of this happen? Let's dive and understand why this happens. Well, friends, it is all based on speed, the speed of light and the speed of sound. The speed of light is significantly faster in air when compared to the speed of sound in air. This is the reason why we see light first and then we hear the sound. We know the speed of light reduces when it passes from a rarer medium to a denser medium. We have seen this in our bending of light simulation. Well, this was about the speed of light and how light travels. But then how does sound travel? How does a medium affect the speed of sound? And can sound travel through vacuum? Let's do an experiment to get an answer to all these questions. This experiment is called bell jar experiment. For this experiment, as default medium is air, you will need a bell jar with a bell jar dome that will help us to make a controlled environment for the sound system and the vacuum pump. A vacuum pump which will suck all the air out of the bell jar dome, sound system to produce a resounding beep and a tablet that will help us to know the metrics involved such as the sound volume and the speed of air. We also have a clamp which helps us to open and close the bell jar dome. We can see this from left, right, top and front view. Front view is best for this experiment. We can zoom in and zoom out also using the scroll. At the bottom of the screen, we can see a few buttons. Air, water and solid are the three media in which we will perform this experiment. Now, let's perform this experiment in air first. Then using the simulator in the Scholar app, make sure you have a speaker or sound in your computer to hear the sound. There is also visual representation of this for better understanding. Take a note and compare the speed at which the sound waves travel through the different media. In the sound system, you can see a small square, red in color, that helps us to switch on the sound system. So, let's do that. We will close the bell jar using this clamp. We can still hear the sound clearly and the speed of sound in air can be seen as 343 meter per second. Now we can see that when the air volume is 100%, the sound volume is also 100%. Let's see what happens when we reduce the air volume in the jar. Let's reduce the air volume by 20% using the vacuum pump. That is, the current air volume is 80%. We can see that the sound volume is also 80% now. So, if we continue to reduce the air volume in the bell jar, the lower the volume of the speed. With no air, that is vacuum, we can't hear any sound. This means that sound requires medium to travel and cannot travel in vacuum at all. Let's perform the same experiment in water now. You need to observe the speed of sound as well as the loudness of the sound here. Here, Water serves as the medium for sound to travel. We have the same sound system here also. And 
we have a tablet to display the values of the actual speed of sound in the current medium. We can see this using either the increase or decrease water level or the front view and the water view. Now here we will put the sound system on. Remember that in air the speed of sound is 343 meter per second. And the moment we submerge this under water, we can see and hear that sound is increased and the speed of sound is also increased a lot as seen on the tablet above. In water, the speed of sound is 1480 meter per second. That is more than four times the speed of sound. This is something amazing, right? Sound travel faster in water is depicted by the circular sound waves traveling much faster in water than in air. Now let's see what happens when we switch the medium to solid. We can see a metal ball which is attached with a string, metal bar and a tablet. At the end, we can see two sound receivers which will help us to know the speed of sound. Can you see the two buttons on the left top corner? The red and the green ones? Let's press the green button. This will make the ball hit the metal rod and make a sound like this. Now in order to see clearly, we will have to view this in slow motion which can be done by clicking on this button. Here. We can see that sound travels nearly 15 times faster in solid when compared to air. We can see that the sound reaches the receivers via the metal rod a lot faster as compared to that in air. On the tablet, it can be observed that the speed of sound in solid is 5120 meter per second. Well, that's too fast. Based on all these three scenarios, what can we say? We can say that sound travels fastest in solids. And why does this happen? Because sound needs medium to travel. And in solids, the particles are very tightly packed, which makes the vibrations to travel faster when we compare them to both in air and water. Well, I hope you must have enjoyed this session on sound. This session is based on an interactive 3D simulation called Scholar developed by Escavel. Visit www.escavel.in to request a download of the software application to try this out yourselves. If you have liked this video then please hit the like button and if you have any queries then do comment down. And yes. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss another update from Let's Do It. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.